afternoon, everybody. Welcome to High Heat on this Monday. It's nice to have you with us as we talked about what's going on. World of Baseball today. Will Folger will coordinate with our good buddy Chris Panetti. Joy's in the house here, too. A lot of momentarily good program lined up for you. A little surprise. Uh, save the brush back. You've heard enough of me bouncing around with these teams anyway. We'll save that for a little later in the program today because the great Brian Kenny, our little host for the MLB Network, which will be all over the Hall of Fame uh, announcements tomorrow. Four o'clock, we're on. Six o'clock, the live deal up in Cooperstown. That's where Brian finds himself on a snowy Monday up there in upstate New York. Believe it or not, that is his ballot uh, with Jones, Kent, Wagner, Hollins. I mean, my God, I, Tim Foley, I guess, didn't make it. But we'll have some fun with Mr. Brian Kenny as we track right now. Brian, nice to have you with us. Let's do one thing first. When you're above the 75% quotia with the tracker, does that hold up? or not hold up. I'm not sure how to read that tracker in relationship to the actual t- tally, which we find out tomorrow. What's the correlation? Go ahead. Norm- normally, you take a hit. Normally, it drops. It doesn't hold up. So, you, But we don't know how deep it goes. We used to have a better indication uh, when it was, you know, Bonds, Clemens, uh, the PED guys, because those guys, the early ballots would come in. You'd have a feel for all right, these are the guys who are making their ballots known, but most of the guys who don't make their ballots known who are no longer writing baseball columns, uh, they had a very different feeling about PEDs, and they would leave them off. So everybody would track high and then fall low. Or the sabermetric darlings, I know you love those guys, the guy with, guys with a high career war, the guys that require a little more nuance, they would normally track high because those are the guys, I, I don't put it this bluntly, but... Uh, you know, you don't mind blunt. Uh, the guys who are really paying attention and doing the study are releasing their ballots, writing columns about their ballots, doing constant Hall of Fame study, and then the guys who weren't doing a ton of study, they would vote, but they wouldn't make it public, and the vote dro- would drop down. So I would expect Helton and Rollin, uh, Roland to drop down a bit, but I, I, I'm hoping Scott Rowland can still make it in. It's possible for a guy for, to go from 63 to 75 percent, and that's what Scott Rowland is looking at. All uh, right. The other aspect of this, before I go break down your ballot, the other aspect of this that I find interesting, obviously, this is going to be a very dicey year. You may not have anybody outside of McGriff, he executive, to get in. Does that play into this a little bit? The writer says, geez, I can't go up to July, up to Cooperstown. I have nobody on my ballot who can get in. So let's get somebody in so it looks like we have a big weekend. I know that's a subtle subtlety. What's your take on that take? Let me hear. Go ahead. I don't, I don't think so that much, Doug. You're not way off on that, though. But I think now, again, Bonds, Clemens, and Schilling are off the ballot, and Sosa. But those top three, they ate about 750 votes last year. So I think anybody looking at the ballot now, there's just more psychological room to assess who's there. I understand, Doug, and I, I know there are some writers who have blank ballots. And it's possible. My, my ballot is small, Doug. You're giving me slack for this. My, I have five guys. I'm a big hall guy, as you know. I'm in the big hall. I like a big hall. I only have five guys. That, but that's low. So I, I could understand someone saying, nobody is over the line for me. But man, Doug, you have to work hard. You mean you don't like Scott Rowland? And you don't like Jimmy Rollins? And you don't like Jeff Kent? You know, and you don't like Todd Helton, and you don't like relief pitchers like Billy Wagner, who I know you're not big on, but is either number one or number two in almost all relief pitching categories. It's either him and Rivera. You mean there's nobody you like? I don't get that. Uh, that to me, you got to try hard to get a zero on this, but it is a smaller ballot. Also, Doug, you should know, next year, Joe Maurer, Chase Utley, who am I missing on the ballot next year? Adrian Beltre, and then the following year, Ichiro and CC Sabathia. So it's about to get more crowded again. This is a good, to your point, this is a good year for someone to, hey, do any of these guys, should any of them make it? Give them a vote right now. Yeah, fair. All right, let's do Wagner number one, since I know you're high on him. Don't you think that relief pitching, it's all about what you do in the big game when everybody is watching? I think that's the most important thing. Now, I know Hoffman got into the Hall of Fame, and he was not a big game reliever. Uh, Mariano was great in everything. Wagner, who's got great regular season numbers and at times was dominant, is very poor in a big game. I think he's got a 10 ERA in 14 postseason appearances. Now, I know it's not necessarily fair to judge a guy's career on 14 lousy appearances, but that's the life of a relief pitcher. Doesn't that hurt Wagner's candidacy in your eyes? 
Doug, you're much more tempered this time around. I like it. You're right. You would want excellence from a relief pitcher in the biggest games as well. It was not there for Billy Wagner. What puts Wagner over the top for me, I mentioned it, in every category that I think is important for a pitcher, which is strikeout percentage, ERA, regular run prevention, park adjusted ERA, ERA plus, fielding independent pitching. Everything I look at, dog, he is number one or number two. And the only other number one is Mariano Rivera. So it's either Billy Wagner or Mariano Rivera. So it's not to his credit, his postseason record. But it's still a small sample. It's enough for me to put him in. Again, dog, he's not eighth, he's not tenth, he's not fifth, he's not fourth, he's not fifteenth. He's one or he's two in everything important. All right, so you like Wagner, right? How about Rollins? I know you love Rollins. We'll get to him in a second. We'll end this with him. Yeah. Rollins, you're high on. He won an MVP, which you like. Played appearances, which you're crazy about. Fair enough. But he's a four lifetime hitter. He doesn't have anything astronomically offensively. I understand that you can be a great defensive shortstop, and he was very good at it, and still not have the great offensive numbers. But in this day and age, I like a little more pop from him. Your take with Rollins. Let me hear. Go ahead. But, dog, while he was playing, but you're making a good case for Jimmy Rollins. Think about it. Dog, you're big on what? You watch the games. Was the guy a winner? Was the guy a champion? Was the guy an MVP? What was Jimmy Rollins to you? Was he a winner? Was he a champion? Was he an MVP? Don't you get that feeling? Yes? Yes. Yes, he was. Yeah. But, I, but so what are we doing? You can win an MVP. You, well, listen, well, look at it this way. He's not better than Kent who won an MVP, and he might get in and Kent not. That's Dog, not I fair. vote for Kent. That's my Dog, take. I vote for Kent. I'm vote Dog, I vote for Kent. Kent is every bit the player Scott Rowland was. I'm big on Kent. You're right about Kent. But your big thing is, and I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to find a, like, a, like a, a kind of a good compromise between the two of us, because I think your inner computer is working. When you see a guy and you're saying, I watch the games, I know this guy's a winner, you're speaking to something that maybe we don't have language for. I'm trying to give language to it, that Jimmy Rollins, what you, for, for nine years, averaged 717 plate appearances. 717 for nine years, played 155 games a year at shortstop, didn't miss games, averaged 36 stolen bases a year during like a decade I'm talking about, and had some real power, slugged like 440 as a shortstop, didn't miss games, plus defense, a winner, a champ, the dog, dog, the type of player you build a championship team around and they did so you're seeing something that you like about Jimmy Rollins and I think you're correct I put him over the line yeah he's not gonna make it I wouldn't vote for him but you know you can make a case as you tried to do there all right uh, how about a guy like Helton who has got such unbelievable splits from Coors Field a hitter's paradise to on the road on the road he was a good hitter at Coors Field, he was Ted Williams. That, to me, is reason right. enough not to vote him in. What is your take on that? For me, Todd Helton is just below the line. I can be sold on him. I look at it, again, my objective metrics have him just outside. I would put it the way I would with Larry Walker, that, all right, we need to put it in the proper context, but I wouldn't disqualify him. I'm willing to look at things with Helton, but I think in recent years we've seen there are first basemen that I would prefer over Helton that aren't in the Hall of Fame that got very little play. Keith Hernandez, Will Clark, uh, John Olrood, right? Guys like this, Carlos Delgado, they, got, they either fell off the ballot immediately or Hernandez lasted, I think, nine years. But those guys deserved better. So I'm good with Helton, but Helton getting in and those guys being just left behind and off the ballot for below 5%, that makes no sense to me. If I thought Helton was above the line, I'd put him in. But I think I have him right at the border. All right, quickly on Roland. Is he going to get the necessary votes? I know last year he was pretty close to it. I think eventually he probably gets in. Is this the year for him? I hope so. I think so. Mike Messina, year 5 to 6, went from 63.5%, I think, to 77%. It's possible. And, dog, I hope that enough writers out there are looking at their ballots and saying, you know what? This is the year to get him in, right? To, to your point. Like, if, if I'm ever going to give a vote to Scott Rowland, I should give it to him this year. Next year, Adrian Beltre. Later, Ishiro. This is the year. I hope he does. But it is a big jump. You know, normally that's a jump you don't make except for year 9 to 10, which a lot of guys have made. I'm hoping Helton is close. I'm hoping Scott Rowland goes over the top. All right, spend about nine hours in that little hall there and memorize all those plaques, learn a little something. Great to have you with us. Always a pleasure. <laughs> See you, doggy.